A special thank you to today's sponsor, Private Internet Access VPN. I've been talking an awful lot recently about Tesla's full self-driving beta request button and the feedback form that they've generated, which gives you a score out of 100. If you haven't seen any of those episodes, you should definitely check those out. But in the meantime, I think I have a way of taking it to the next level. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I wanted to do a real quick episode today. I think I've got a really good idea and I'm hoping somebody at Tesla is paying attention to this because I think this would be a great idea. Honestly, I thought about programming it for the phone, but I realized there's a couple of pieces of information I don't have, so I can't actually do it on the phone, but it'd be really cool to do on a phone too if Tesla wanted to work on that. So if anybody wants to work on that with me, <laughs> I would be super happy to. So anyway, what am I talking about here? Well, let's take a little step backwards. Of course, people really love to play games, right? You know, you don't really have to have an outcome for it. So the basic elements of a game are you have to have some sort of challenge, you have to have some sort of strategy to get around that challenge, to overcome it, and then generally speaking, there's some sort of score that tells you whether you're winning or losing, right? So at least you know, for today. I know there are probably outlier games that don't have that stuff, but let's not worry about those. I'm just going to worry about kind of standard definition games. So what I talk about when I talk about gamifying something is the ability to turn a normal task into something that is more like a game. Uh, and this is certainly not new with driving. I have used Waze for years and Waze has like a ranking system. And as you drive more miles and you submit reports and things like that, you get moved up into getting, eventually you get to be royalty and you get to wear a little crown. So, you know, it makes you happy. You're like, you hoo, I got this, this cool thing. So in general, giving somebody a reward and a metric for measuring that reward is a really good way to train that person to do something and you can train them to be safer amazingly enough. So that's what I'm talking about here. I certainly know that there have been many insurance companies over the year, Progressive, Allstate, I'm not sure if State Farm has done it or not, I think they might have, but they'll give you this little thing and they'll install it in your car. And then basically the problem is that they tell you they're gonna give you good you know, driving discounts and stuff, but essentially the entire thing is more or less of a punitive service sort of deal, right? So that means that it's a situation where if you screw up, you get a low score and they increase your rates. So that is not a particularly good incentivizing function, right? If you're going to say, we're only going to give you sort of this baseline thing like this, and we're only going to raise your rates, that's what we're going to do to you. That's not particularly incentivizing. But what you can do instead is something like what Tesla has done, perhaps inadvertently, I don't know. <laughs> but what they've done instead is they've got, here's a reward. The reward is you get the full self-driving beta earlier than everybody else if you have the highest score ranking. So of course you've got people who are attempting to get 100% on the driving ability. And I did another episode on that recently, so you can check that out if you're interested. But the basic idea here is that we've got a carrot system rather than a stick system, right? We've got something where we're giving you a reward if you do well enough. So there's a high degree of motivation to do that. A lot of people will do this just to get a gold star. Like I said, for Waze, I drove a lot of miles just to get my little royalty crown, right? And that's it's just completely senseless. It's, it's a useless thing. Getting the full self-driving beta is actually a really, really nice reward. So that's all well and good. But what am I talking about about taking it to the next level? Well, the next level of this is to take it to a state where you actually have an interactive game system in your car. I previously talked about doing it with some sort of a meter, but I think we can do one better. You can actually show people interactively what they're doing. Now, I'm not saying you would interactively update their score, although it's a really relative straightforward calculation so I think that could be done like real time but if you wanted if Tesla was like that's too much processing power there's too much stuff going on if they wanted to update the score every 30 to 60 seconds that's totally fine because that would reduce the uh, you know power that's required but what you really need to have is some sort of interactive metric that shows you how you're doing on the metrics that Tesla is testing so again there are five metrics I'm going to remove the disengagement metric because I think that's just kind of senseless and also if you're doing this as kind of a game you're you're playing the game so you're not going to get disengaged from autopilot so that's not really a viable thing so what remains well number one you have aggressive or too hard a braking number two you have aggressive or too hard a turning number three you have potential collision warning which means you're approaching someone too rapidly from the rear and number four you have follow distance that's too close when you're above 50 miles an hour in a minute let's talk about the interface but first 
Hey y'all, I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Private Internet Access VPN, which is the sponsor for today's video. A VPN is all about privacy, security, and freedom, and Private Internet Access VPN is the best at all of these. If you don't want government entities or commercial entities snooping around your stuff, then you definitely want VPN, and PIA VPN is the best at this. They use open source software, so that means that everything's being examined by the open source community constantly, and so their security is at the very top of the game. You also want security for your data and for your browsing history. And Private Internet Access VPN never uses logs. They don't keep any logs of your access or anything that you've done. And this has been held up in court, so that's amazing. And finally, we all want freedom. We want to be able to access data when we want it and where we want it. And Private Internet Access VPN gives you access to VPN servers all around the globe. So you can basically be in Canada or Europe or South Korea or anywhere else you'd like to be, all while using Private Internet Access VPN. And this gives you the ability to download content that you might not be able to get in your own home territory, and that's amazing. So with the best privacy through open source software, the best security, and the best freedom to access content anywhere you want, anytime you want, Private Internet Access VPN is the best. Check out the link in the description and see how you can save up to 83%. Heck, it ends up being less than a cup of coffee per month to protect your privacy, your security, and your freedom. What could be better? All right, so how do we gamify this? Well, I've done a little bit of messing around in Photoshop, and I'm going to show you the basic interface that I've got. All right, so here's the interface, and what you can see is there's sort of a, a triple T, I guess, this purple thing in the middle that's on top of the car, and that sort of shows you your default state. So when you're driving and everything is super cool, that T sort of remains in the middle. On the left and the right, you've got sort of like semicircles that are like green and then yellow and then red. And those measure the side to side g-forces. So if you make a left hand turn, the T will sort of start swinging to the right and it will go, you know, first into the green because you're making a good turn and then into the yellow and then into the red, indicating that you're turning too hard. And of course, if you turn to the right, it would go the opposite direction to the left and show that it was swinging that way instead. And then you've got the same thing, but sort of inverted with the braking. So currently the T is showing like a green for the braking, but as you start to brake, it moves forward towards the car and goes into the yellow and then into the red. In the meantime, the sort of gray zigzaggy lines in front, which I think would actually be a little bit more faint in general. It would normally be almost invisible. I made it a little more visible for the interface here so you could see it better. But basically that's your collision warning. If you get too close behind somebody and it looks like you're gonna hit them, that thing would go from yellow to red really fast. And finally, you've got the sort of green snake line that shows the car in front of you and your distance to that person. That would only come on when you're going over 50 miles an hour, so that's the part that would count with the follow distance. And as it got closer from two seconds down to one second, it would start to turn yellow and then it would turn red if you were within one second. So here we can see me just messing around with it. So right, you're braking and it goes into the red with the T thing. And then here you're making a right-hand turn, and so it's starting to shift into the left-hand area. And if you go too hard, it goes into the red. And here you could be making a left-hand turn, so it's going the opposite direction into the green, the yellow, and the red. And then finally, the collision warning can go from yellow to red. It could do that, you know, rather rapidly. And I don't have the graphic shown, but if the car in front of you started getting closer and closer, that green line would go from, you know, green to yellow to red. And notice that there's also a thing that says 2.3 seconds. That's just arbitrary. I have no idea. This was just a picture, right? So anyway, but it would say 2.3 seconds. It would start moving down into one. And maybe when it got to like 1.6 or something, it would start turning yellow. And then when it got down to one second, it would turn red. And then also in my mind, there would be sounds associated with it. So if it's doing something and you start to make a turn or you start to break, it would do something like beep, 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 right? So the tone would both increase in frequency and also how closely spaced the tones were. So again, it would give you an audible sort of warning. So it would, you know, if it's in the green and you're turning, it would be like beep, 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 and it's like, good, you're making a good turn, right? But if you started to turn too hard and it got into the yellow, it would be like, beep, 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 beep. And then if you got into the red, it would be like, beep, 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 right? So anyway, you can hear what I'm doing here, but it would do that kind of a thing. And then the collision warning already has a sound that's associated with it, so no big deal. And I think the follow distance, maybe you wouldn't necessarily want to have a sound with that because that would be really annoying if it was doing that, right? Breaking and turning are kind of momentary sort of actions you're doing, whereas the follow distance is something you could be doing for miles so it might be really annoying for that so I don't know you might not want to have a tone associated with that and then of course at the bottom you can see there's a current score and also a cumulative score so the cumulative score is what you've got on the Tesla app currently and the current score would be what's going on right now like on your drive right now so if you got like hundred percent you know you're trying to stay in that hundred percent zone 
So that's the basic interface I sort of constructed. And what would happen is if you weren't playing the game, if you chose not to do that at the beginning of your trip, it would either disappear or go super, super light gray. So it wouldn't be taking up any, you know, visual space or anything like that. And of course the audible tones wouldn't go on at the same time either. So what would the rewards be for all of this? Well, number one, you're getting interactive feedback. The big problem right now with the Tesla thing is that the follow distance, the turning stuff, all of that, you're just guessing at until you get out of the car at the end of your trip and you look at your meter, right? <laughs> so I've started to figure it out, but I don't know if I'm really well into the green or if I'm, you know, almost uh, too aggressive in my turn. So it's not clear from that because you're not getting interactive feedback. So interactive feedback is a huge thing. The second thing is that, of course, you're being trained to be a better driver because interactively you're seeing this and that's a fantastic thing. And of course you want your current and your cumulative score to go up and to be as good as possible. And then the third thing is you could open this up sort of anonymized, but you could show the sort of fleet average, right? So you could be like, who's driving right now and what's their score and who's got the best cumulative score and you could be measuring yourself against those people. So this gives you all of those elements of competition that humans really, really love and it puts it into a nice fun, interface. It doesn't take up any extra room on the screen. It's all sort of there. It wouldn't take too much processing power from the Tesla to actually do this either. So I think this is a huge win-win-win situation because you basically could turn driving well into a game and that would be an amazing benefit to really everybody involved. So whether or not Tesla wanted to continue this full self-driving, you know, feedback thing in the future after the beta has rolled out, I think that they should do this for sure. I think they should have some sort of gamified version of driving safety. I think it would be an amazing thing to do. And I think the populace would love it. They would eat it up and it would turn people into better drivers. And one of Tesla's missions is safety and saving lives and making people better drivers. And oh my gosh, what a great thing this would be, right? And also if they could turn it into a phone app, you could not only use it for Teslas in the future, right? You could just mount it on your phone whenever you wanted to. The big thing that's missing right now, of course, is the kind of, you know, distances in front of other cars. There's no way for me to gather that information. But certainly George Hotz and Kama AI and certainly other, you know, auto manufacturers could do this and they could integrate it into a phone app. So we could increase this from just a Tesla sort of thing to a nationwide to an international sort of thing where everybody could be competing and we could see who was the best drivers in the entire world, right? Because of course we could get much more refined metrics than what we've got right now. Right now it's just kind of a, a, a score, but let's say instead of out of a hundred, you could get a million or something, right? So it's a much more refined score. And so you could actually see who the best drivers in the world are. That would be really, really cool. And it would teach everybody to drive better. And I really don't see any reason why Tesla and then other people should not be doing this. So anyway, Tesla or anybody else who wants to contact me about this, definitely contact me about this because I would love to work on this. I think that this is a social good sort of thing. And Elon Musk and Tesla and Andre Carpet Kathy and George Hotz and everybody else, anybody who happens to listen to this, I highly encourage you all to work on this and I would love to work with you on it too. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it and consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support and your help with everything. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the Tesla Bot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And thank you to Private Internet Access VPN for sponsoring today's video. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye. <laughs>